Instead of your regularly scheduled program, you have the pleasure of my company. I am the accuser, Satan. I am manifested before you now because I'm bored and I need something to talk about. Even better, Mr. Dapperton was foolish enough to let me have a show on his Liberty Network. <laughs> Let's begin showing Mr. Dapperton the error of his ways with a video of Democrat Socialist 01. He's a purveyor of many delightfully insidious and diabolical ideas about collectivism and usurping the spiritual supremacy of God with humans in positions of political power. Can he prove that state-directed capitalism is not socialism? Let's suffer him together. Hello everyone. Quite a number of you would have heard the claim that South Korea's economic success is largely due to free market capitalism. Indeed, in 1983, Ronald Reagan said to the members of the South Korean National Assembly that their country's economic success was due to having a free economic system. Who gives a sh**? End the video. We're done here. Questions? Comments? Critique? What do you think about my new series? Your series? What? Okay, you know what? I'm not done here. South Korea needs instruction on proper oppression. They need this. As Reagan was uttering these words, South Korea was implementing its fifth five-year economic and social development plan. To add to this, there was extensive state ownership in key strategic areas of the economy. You show how in 1961, the military nationalized the financial sector in South Korea as an example of how South Korea is not capitalist, but you show the fifth five-year plan happening from 1982 to 1986. A whole 20 years later, you don't mention how South Korea denationalized the banks in the mid-1980s. Just where is this going? Now it is clear that Reagan was of course wrong when he claimed South Korea had a free economic system. The Bank of Korea was established in 1950 and has been the central bank of South Korea ever since. Whatever your opinion on central banking, you cannot have a free market with a central bank. So yes, Mr. O1 is correct about Reagan being wrong. So what kind of system was it then? Was it socialist? Definitely not. It was not even social democratic. It was state-directed capitalism, an economic system that had been favoured previously in Imperial Japan and adopted by other Asian tigers, such as Taiwan. I glanced at your channel and saw that a lot of it is just quibbling over names. I hear your prayers to Franklin D. Roosevelt every night, Democrat Socialist 01. I know what is in your heart, but how can we possibly seek to chain the masses and subjugate them to my will when we're too busy playing hot potato with the word fascist to people who believe in revolting ideas that prevent us from acquiring power like individual freedom or natural rights? Do you have any idea how many puppies you could have kicked in the meantime? 42. Democratic Socialist, evil is eternal, but you aren't. Get your priorities straight, man! Keep in mind, between 1961 and 1993, South Korea was governed by a succession of military dictatorships, so such an economic system suited that country well since it was a top-down command structure. W are those toy soldiers from the 71st Nutcrackers Division? Look at them! They're adorable! What also helped the owners of these massive conglomerates was the state's repression of workers' rights which allowed these companies to make higher profits. It's imperative the state use its force in its false legitimate right to use violence to suppress individuals. More importantly, they can give this false legitimacy to private companies and have them take the blame for what happens when people abuse this power. A wonderfully delicious quid pro quo. Though not the most efficient, you're about to see why. Wages were kept down. Free trade unions couldn't operate. In thousands of noisy, ill-ventilated sweatshops, Korean workers toiled long hours a day making shoes, textiles, or wigs for export. No, 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 no. Where's the mud on their faces? Why aren't they out in the hot sun standing in water buffalo dung and rice patties, breaking their backs on farms while keeping bloodthirsty mosquitoes out of their crying children's eyeballs, working for pennies a day rather than being paid wages by a private company? You call this human suffering? This is bare bones, half-assed, basic bitch human suffering. They should be praying their things to my worshippers in the ruling class for this bountiful feast of tree roots bark in a wrathy mansion trap. You want true agony? Go to North Korea. Honestly, some people think if you want people to suffer, just throw in a dictatorship. No. 
True torment, real gourmet anguish requires patience, preparation, and above all, you cannot allow private industry into your recipe or you'll end up with South Korea or Hong Kong where people revolt to protect their rights. Ugh, gross. At the age of 18, Yi Chung Kak went to work in a textile mill in Incheon. The first day I got there, the moment I saw the conditions, I thought this is hell. That's the first impression I had. Trust me, hell doesn't have labor-saving devices. When they tried to start their own union, the women were harassed by the management, which paid men to wait for them, armed with buckets from the latrines. The men brought in buckets full of excrement and said, let's see if you're going to vote, you women. We found them! We found the guys who give a sh literal bucket loads! The workers would come into the office to vote, and they said, why don't you try some The union collapsed, the women were fired, and their leaders beaten up or tortured by police. A decent start, but the state should be aware that without private companies, workers would never have been able to increase their standard of living at all. I don't understand why the state doesn't just cut out the middleman. I mean, I enjoy having others torture people for me, especially when they have no idea of my involvement. But there's nothing like getting your hands dirty and doing it yourself. So workers who disrupted the economic plan in both state and private enterprises were to be brutally punished. It should be noted that South Korean dictator Park Chung-hee was a big supporter of class collaboration and believed that everyone should work towards the same goal. The utopian mindset is a great instrument for oppression. If you're so wonderfully arrogant and narcissistic that you believe you have the perfect society that must be implemented by any means necessary, it is no wonder the regime was so repressive. It's this same utopian mindset that brings about such delightful atrocities such as in the Soviet Union to Cambodia or Red China. Anyone who disrupted this plan was to be imprisoned and sometimes even killed. I disagree with killing actually. Obviously you can't torment a corpse. At least not yet. The South Korean example also shows that state ownership within a capitalist economy is not socialist at all. For example, when Park Chung-hee came to power in 1961, the first thing he did was to nationalize the banking system. Capitalism is a system of private ownership and free exchange. Ugh. Revolting, I know. But if the state owns industry, it cannot be a capitalist economy. At best, it's a mixed economy. Now, was this a step towards socialism? No, it was actually done to help the growth of private businesses. These banks were nationalized so they could give low interest loans to massive private companies in order to help them grow. Low interest rates? Cheap money gives businesses the illusion of economic growth that encourages them to expand rather than save. Just like in the 2000s housing bubble. Devious. I like it. Not capitalistic, however. You need to be precise in your language if you want people to accept ideas that will literally kill them in the long run. Furthermore, other state-owned companies played a similar role. For example, Poyang Steelworks was used to provide steel for domestic companies at below export prices. Therefore, these state-owned companies and industries were there to help the growth of private capitalism. Just because something is privately owned does not make an economy capitalist! So the economic system in South Korea consisted of a strict hierarchy just like you would see in the army. At the top, there was the general who gave orders. His orders would then be delivered to the economic planning board, who would then pass them on to both the state-owned and privately-owned companies, who would carry these orders out. Oh, even better. That's national socialism. Bureaucrats who have no idea how the industries work dictating how they should be run. The kind of price distortions and inefficiencies mandated by the state were sure to have created some delicious misery. But look, Mr. O1, I despise capitalism. It has lifted more people out of poverty and improved the standard of living for more people than any other idea conceived by man. I want people to suffer. I want to drive people to the depths of despair so that they fall 
fall down and worship me to meet their material transient needs. But to defeat your enemy, you first have to know them. And you, Democratic Socialist 01, do not know your enemy. Basically, both capitalists and workers were the foot soldiers who carried out the government's plan. Therefore, we can say that the South Korean example breaks a number of myths. First myth being that nationalization and government intervention always leads to socialism. You're right. It doesn't lead to socialism any more than Maple Street leads to Maple Street. In the South Korean case, it helped the growth of private capitalism. The second myth is that South Korea's economic advancement was due to free market capitalism. Now this claim is the most deceitful of all. I hope you brought numbers to back that up, because I can already hear the argument that growth occurred in spite of a command economy. The South Korean capitalist economy had far more in common with the economies of Imperial Japan, the Third Reich, Chiang Kai-shek's Taiwan, and Deng Xiaoping's China. I think we already established that. Besides, none of those examples are capitalist. Basically, state-directed, monopolistic capitalism. And of course, right-wingers and libertarians also agree that South Korea was a capitalist country despite its statist history. It's a shame that they are far too dishonest to admit that other countries that adopted the same economic system. It's simple, private ownership and free exchange. A command economy cannot have free exchange. The two are mutually exclusive. Either you don't know this, or you're a pro-capitalist and you're presenting a case opposite of what you actually believe, just to make the opposing side sound ridiculous. But who would do that? Look. It's very clear that South Korea has backslid quite a bit in terms of the amount of suffering it inflicts on its people. While they aren't absolutely free, they're still generally better off than most people on Earth. They need to be more like North Korea. It's very clear that to truly bring about the human misery and bring my kingdom upon Earth, we cannot allow capitalism whatsoever. At this rate, people might take the idea of private property and free exchange to its logical conclusion. I mean, the last thing I'd want is for people to realize that they don't need a corruptible state to govern them. Hope you enjoyed that. Check out my channel, Filthy Heretic, for more weaponized autism regarding anarcho-capitalism, philosophy, and Catholicism. Spoiler alert, I'm not an atheist. Questions, comments, critique? What do you think about this new show? Any suggestions from a Democratic Socialist 01's fans inevitably swore my channel? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.